All right, let's take one more look at the game and the strategy that we just covered with the, the lapel pin and the chokes and everything that we did there and talk about how the arm could come into play in a couple different you know positions and scenarios there. Okay, so we're going to look at, you know, kind of right off the beginning when we get to that knee and the belly position, all right? So I got my thumb in, I got my lapel uh, pin on his shoulder, okay, I raise up, I go to my knee and the belly. Remember the first thing we talked about is him pushing against our knee and wanting to defend against the knee and the belly, okay? And how that led to the choke right here, all right? Well, the choke is there, okay? And if that's something that you feel comfortable with and you work to where you get that to a high level, that might, might be what you want to take every time. But that's not your only option, all right? Because when he pushes my knee, it's very hard for him to not expose a little bit of space here, okay? Even if he pushes more down, there's still usually a little bit of room for me to drive my hand inside uh, between his arm and his ribs, okay? So now I can easily turn this into an underhook, all right? And I could do all the same things that we've already covered with that underhook. All right. If I wanted to start to bring him over and turn this into a Kimura position, okay, and attack the arm, go to the arm bar, whatever, it's there. Okay. Or I want to get this underhook, drop down around his head, circle my knee under his elbow, smash and go to the smother mount. That's there too. Okay. So, you know. Just, I want to point that out and let you know, keep your eyes open for it, you know, if you really, you know, uh, revolve your game around the Kimura or, uh, you know, arm bars and things like that, you're more of an arm hunter than a neck hunter, this is an option for you to catch it, okay? Let's look at one other spot where the arm can become available, okay? So we'll say, maybe I did decide to go for the neck here, so he pushes against my knee, I drop my elbow, and I start to go for my short choke finish. This is very common. You see how he's turning as far as he can, reaching to grab my elbow, try to pull my elbow off, get in the space, get his head back in underneath my arm. In that situation, I can let go of the choke and go around his arm and start to set up the cross shoulder Kimura. Okay? That actually sometimes can expose itself in the very beginning. All right? Sometimes now when I start to do this, even here someone will already decide that they want to pull their arm out and, and get space between your arm and their neck. Okay? So when they do that, I can let go and then wrap their arm and now get to Kimura position. Okay? Off this cross shoulder grip. Alright? Or like I said, while I'm already here in the choke, I see him reaching. You see how I just circle my hand through, make my grip on my lapel. And now I start my, you know, step over the head, cross shoulder Kimura. All right? So, you see now, I mean, you know, this is exactly how my game works. All right? This is my mindset, what I'm thinking, what I'm looking for, neck, arm, mount. Neck, arm, mount. All right? There's no way one of them is not going to become available. All right, if he defends the mount, there's the arm. I go for the neck, he defends the neck, there's the mount, there's the arm again. Okay, I mean, and it's just this endless circle. All right, you can combine them and put them together as much as you, you know, uh, feel comfortable with. And, and, you know, you can explore new ways and, and new setups beyond what I'm teaching here in this series. Um, but just try to keep that in mind. Okay, keep your eyes open to what they're giving you when they defend against something. Because... That always means something else is available, all right? Uh, so this is just a couple more examples of that game, that strategy, and that mindset coming to, coming to play.